Creating such environments in Unreal Engine 5 isn't that difficult. So let's see how we can create this scene as fast as possible. So let's get through it. As you can see, I've started with a blank default project of Unreal Engine. And let's just delete this rectangular plane. And the first thing to do is to add a plugin to the project called Landmass. So let's go to the plugins window and type the Landmass. And it is here. Just check it. And you might also be needed to restart your project. Just do it. And it will be added to your project. All right, now it's time to go to the landscape mode and add a landscape to our project. But just make sure that you've checked this enable edit layers option over here. And let's check the other parameters that we have here. It looks good. So let's just create the landscape. So as you can see, the landscape that I've created has already a material on it. So let's just go to the select mode and click on the landscape and check the details section. And yeah, it's right here. I've downloaded this material from Quixel Bridge. We will get to that soon, but let's just go back to the landscape mode by pressing the shift plus two button on your keyboard. So yeah, here we are in the sculpt tab. Let's just go to the blueprint section and let's just expand the blueprint brush and select the custom brush landmass and then click on the landscape so as you can see we made some changes on our landscape and it's obvious in your viewport all right it's time to go back to the select mode and see what we got here in the landmass plugin so let's do it so i'm gonna select the landscape custom brush from outliner section and here we have the details of this plugin so as you can see, here we have three vertices that lead to creation of such a mountain. And each of these vertices can be moved along the landscape. And as you can see, I can move it along any of the axes. And by holding the Alt key on your keyboard and move a vertex along one of the axes, a new vertex could be created so that we can have better control on the shape of the mountain. You are also able to change the curve and edge of the mountain by moving these two handles sticked to each vertex. And right now I'm trying to reach the desired shape of this mountain by adding new vertices and moving them along the landscape. All right, now let's take a look to the details section and to the parameters that we got here in the landmass plugin. But note that I will only check the parameters that are more important than the others. So first of all, let's check the blend mode, which I set on auto blend by default, and let's change it to minimum. So as you can see, here we have a pit instead of a mountain due to the changing of blend mode from alpha blend to minimum. And right now it's not necessary to continue with the minimum mode, so let's change it to the maximum and maximum mode is just like the alpha blend. All right, I think additional explains is not necessary for the blend mode, so let's check this invert shape box over here, and the difference is clear in the viewport, and it just invert the shape of the mountain in the landscape. So let's just continue. Here we have follow, which is a very important section in landmass plugin, so just pay attention. The first parameter is follow angle, which makes the mountain sharp and higher so if you're looking for a mountain with sharp edges like islands this parameter could be a game changer to you well actually this cap option isn't so much useful i think so let's just leave it and continue and here we have edge width offset which gives offset to edge of the mountain it just make it bigger as you can see and it's obvious in the viewport so if you have just found it, your desired shape of mountain and you just wanted to make it bigger, you can use edge width offset. Or if you want to make it bigger in the Z axis, I mean make it higher, you can use the Z offset. And here we have some other parameters and sections, but I'm not going to talk about them because as I said in the first part of the video, I want to get to the results as fast as possible. 
So here we reach to another important section which is called as curl noise. So if you want to add some random shapes to your mountain, you must come to this section. I mean, definitely. And the reason is so clear in the viewport. I mean, how did you want to model a mountain so quickly like this? Just note that the second parameter of curling, I mean curl to strength, makes separate mountains, but the first parameter makes them stick together. And if you didn't like the tiling of your mountain, just make sure you're playing with the third and fourth parameters of the curl section. And yeah, I think that's cool. I just can't believe that I've created this mountain in only three or four minutes. I highly recommend you to use this plugin in your projects. So if you want to turn this shape, I mean this mountain, to a hill, all you need to do is to reduce the fall of angle. And here we have some hills sticked together. For example, let's assume that you want to create some desert environments or some hills or some mountains. All you need to do is to play with these four parameters in the curling section. Okay. Now that we are familiar with some important parameters and we know how to create a mountain with landmass plugin, I've just created this mountain using the features that we've talked about it. And I've just flattened this area of the mountain using the sculpt tab in the landscape mode, which is not a difficult work to do and it's not a big deal. So let's continue. I want to work on this area of the mountain. So I've placed a camera to shoot from this angle. And now it's time to add the nature to the mountain that we've created. So in this regard, I have used Quixel Bridge, which provides so many cool assets in different environments. And in this project, I have used the Tundra environment because I want to create a Tundra environment and I'm going to use all the rocks and the woods, the materials from this collection. Therefore, I downloaded the assets that I needed to creation of this environment. And right now I want to show you the results. Okay, so let's just change the perspective to here and let's unhide the Tundra folder from outliner section. All right, this is the matter of downloading the assets and mega scans from Quixel and transfer it to Unreal Engine 5 and place it somewhere you like it. And it really depends on the mood of your scene, the atmosphere and the feelings that you want to convey to your audience. So here, as you can see, I've changed the perspective to the camera mode and this is the shot that I want to render it. All right, now it is time to add some grass to our environment. So let's just change the mode from select to foliage and Yes, we are in the paint tab and let's just go to the content browser. And as you can see, I have downloaded two collection of grasses from Quixel Bridge. Now let's just select all the meshes that we needed and drag it to the foliage tab. And let's go to the second folder and let's select all of these and again, drag them to foliage. All right, as you can see, I'm in the paint tab. so. Let's just increase the density a little bit and let's add the grasses to our scene. All right, this part of project is just about placement of grasses on the empty spaces of environments. So as you can see, I want to get through it much more faster. Maybe sometimes I have reduced the size of the brush, the density, but all in all, as you can see, it's just placement and brushing and painting the grasses on the spaces that I want to have some grass and green spaces on it. All right, I think it's okay. So yeah, seems fine, looks good. Let's just go back to the content browser and I'm just looking for the collection that I've downloaded from Marketplace of Epic Games. Yeah, it's right here. The procedural biomes, which was free for the mount in Epic Games marketplace so let's just go to the meshes and here it is the whole collection so let's just unhide the folder and yeah here we have the trees that i've placed on my scene and it looks really cool so let's just go back to the camera view and see the results yeah it looks really good so let's just change the camera view and the angle that we want to have our shot 
yeah i think this angle is okay so let's just get out the camera view and in addition i have placed a cabin in this scene and it's just a matter of exporting the geometry with data smith from 3ds max and importing it to unreal engine 5 so if you want to learn it how i did that just leave it to the comment section so i will make a tutorial about exporting from 3ds max with data smith to unreal engine 5 so let's just continue i think it looks really great but i want to add an hdri backdrop to my environment because i want to have an overcast atmosphere and weather and it is looking much better so let's just set the intensity of the hdri and yeah i think it's really cool but let's just play with the exponential hate fuck to get better results as you can see i'm playing with the fog density and it depends on you because you are the author of your scene but i think it is very attractive that we were able to create such environments in a very short period of time all right if you have any question or opinion just leave it to the comment section i'll answer to all of them and if you are in this stage and you want to take some renders and make some animations from this scene just make sure you won't miss the video which has appeared on your screen. Therefore, see you in the next videos.